emerging from my couchette, my sofa bed, where I slept for in the 90s for eight years. I cannot say that the lodgers were very amused. They used to um, quite often laugh. It was not that comfortable, though in fact it is made of feathers. But in order to keep everything going, I hadn't any option. A little contrast to the couchette, the couch and the living room. The house is on Fifth Avenue, New York. And um, that's at the Newport House of Sophia Augusta Brown when she was married to um, William Watts Sherman as his second wife. He was a he was a widower. And I think you saw it before, maybe you didn't. The family house in Providence, Rhode Island, 357 Benefit Street, where I spent an interesting Christmas in 1961, the end of 61, before I embarked on my world, round the world trip on different ships, third class. I'll tell you that in another episode. And here again. Oh, oh. No, I can't face it. Has to be done. I'll put that on the back burner for the moment. I'll turn off my orange compote, turn down my pasta sauce, and go to something a little more humorous. Julia, being 50, at a wonderful occasion at the London Oratory, where I have the programme still. Voted Mass of Our Lady offered for my children and the Infanta Maria Cristina of Spain, Countess Contessa Marone, Saturday the 29th of April 1989. We have an organ prelude, Fugue in G minor by J.S. Bach. We have Mozart's Coronation Mass, Coronation Mass, the Kyrie, the Gloria, the Sanctus and the Annual's Day. We have the Offertory Motet, Sub Tum Paradisium, also by Mozart. We have an organ finale, Variations by Spitling. The choir of the London Oratory, um, Con Celebrants, Father Wilfred Ty, Don Philip Jerb, Ward of St Benedict, Father Alexander Sherbrooke. Both the latter two have been told I'm mad. And it seems choose to believe it. If you look on my website, you'll find a list of nearly 200 persons who've been told as recently as last week, that will be the 3rd of May, I think, yes, that I'm mad, insane, off my head, dotty, and a few other choice um, condemnations. Here I am, Julia, looking like a boiled egg rather recently, and a very dear cousin by marriage, Adam Clayton Powell, who was visiting me with his wife. It is regrettable I look like a boiled egg, but there we are. And there are my great aunt's gloves, which I did wear when I went out with Prince William. My mother gave me a great many, great quantity of my great aunt Julia Stoner, the Marquis de Liverpool's beautiful gloves, some suede, and these I think are buckskin, I think. I think none of them were synthetic. Uh, Princess Beatrice Torlonia lived in a palazzo of Torlonia um, in Rome on the Via Bocca di Leone and always entertained me to tea whenever I was in Rome on these many occasions gone past. And she informed me that she and her sister Christa, who was younger, were specifically requested by, by Queen Ina of Spain not to go out to loose nightclubs with my mother, because she's beautiful and she's dangerous and she wears green nail varnish. So I was lucky that um, all was forgiven in time for Christa to be my godmother, albeit my mother declined to come to my christening two weeks after I was born at the London Oratory. So I was carried by Nanny and my great-aunt Julia Stoner, Marquise Dupoul, and Christa held me over the font. There's a splendid photograph which you'll find on my website, if I'm so doing. This was a Bible to um, upper classes who were very conscious of their 
breeding and prominence and prestige. It's called, no, oh, this one is Burke's, Burke's Peerage and Baronetage. This is my copy given to me in 1976 by Jock Balfour. On the right, Mowbray, Seagrave and Sturton, the premier barons. The family my grandmother married into. My mother's maiden name was Jeanne Sturton. The present, the ones I knew were the 27th and 28th Baron Seagrave and 24th and 25th Baron Sturton. And they go back to, where did it say, 1312, for example. The title was revived at great cost um, when Queen Victoria came to the throne in um, 1829. And this cost £30,000 through the College of Arms to re revive a title 500 years in abeyance which comes from the female line, my line, pre-Reformation peerages that quite often, quite frequently went to the woman of the blood. And there are several women peerages, peeresses I beg your pardon, in this magnificent tome which has the royal coat of arms on its cover. The most important of all at present time are there are two wills, or three, but this is the state of Rhode Island and county of Newport. The probate court of the city of Newport, a state of Sophia Augusta Brown, number 8232. The executor's first and final account, June the 28th, 1947. I also have the schedule of her settlement and her last will and testimony, as I also do of my own grandmother, Music constant from Lady Cannes, and I need to find a contingency lawyer. A, a lawyer, perhaps as bright as Alan Dershowitz, your name in the Fon case, will take on my case and cause. Um, the family lawyers in Newport refuse to answer my letters because I don't have enough money to pay a lawyer. I have a box full of accounts here, which were originally produced for me by Edwards and Angel in Providence in Newport, Rhode Island. And then there's a will here of my half American arm, Nadine, somewhere in here, which again, it all interrelates. And um, I think somebody should have the intelligence to resolve this terrible tragedy. Man-made, totally unnecessary, and the life I'm still leading, with as much joie de vivre as I can find, because I have the most fabulous friends, and most especially marvellous children. I have another picture of the great aunt up there. My mother had to murder her before she got the Fabergé jewelry and the coronet. Hence her intense interest in nursing. And there's a family book on stone. Another edition made by one of the prisoners who held a bread knife under my throat in prison aftercare. It comes from where I come from. There's a old photograph of the house in Priscilla Chapel. You can see how wooded it was. Very much changed now. Here's the tree that fell over my mother's grave, splitting it in two. This is the book by the Benedictine monk, who is close to the washing up, turning a blind eye. Here we have to go. Beneath the lovely um, icon, this is the coat of arms that my nice prisoner, ex-prisoner, when I was doing prison aftercare for the Catholic, prisoner's social welfare, the Society of St Vincent of St Paul, here was the coat of arms that a charming gentleman, I think he was called um, Jardine, not Jardine Matheson, one of the Jardine family who had been in prison, who's now dead, sadly, held a bread knife under my throat, but after being thrown out at 17, I don't suppose 
he was that problematic to deal with. He could not have been nicer, but he died of tuberculosis, I think, under a bridge. And that was his little contribution. It's very naive, but it's rather charming. It distracts me from the washing up. Thank you.